The laryngeal skeleton is formed principally by the hyoid bone, the thyroid cartilage, and the cricoid cartilage. The hyoid bone is shaped like a horseshoe. The muscles of the neck support it, and it in turn supports the base of the tongue. The thyroid cartilage, better known as the Adam's apple, is shield-shaped with a notch on its top edge. The thyrohyoid membrane connects it to the hyoid bone above. The cricoid is a complete signet-shaped ring with its broad aspect posterior. You can easily feel the cricoid cartilage as a firm ridge three to four fingers breadths below the hyoid bone and three to four fingers breadths above the tracheal notch. The cricoid attaches to the thyroid cartilage laterally at two cricothyroid joints, allowing both cartilages to move independently and as a unit as the muscles contract. The relatively avascular cricothyroid membrane connects the cricoid and thyroid cartilages anteriorly in the midline. Let's look at the internal structure of the larynx. The epiglottis is an important pharyngeal landmark during intubation. It's a curved, leaf-shaped structure attached to the inside of the thyroid cartilage. Its upper rounded edge projects into the pharynx. The stalk at the base of the epiglottis allows it to fold over the glottis. This flexion helps protect from aspiration by directing food and liquid into the esophagus. The next key landmarks are the arytenoid cartilages. These irregular, Pyramid-shaped cartilages sit on the upper posterior rim of the cricoid ring. Located on top of the arytenoids, the corniculate and cuneiform cartilages add bulk and shape to the mucosal-covered arytenoid bulges. The vocal cords are ligaments that project forward from each arytenoid to the inside midpoint of the thyroid cartilage. Muscles move these arytenoids to tense, relax, and swing the vocal cords from side to side. The cords open on inhalation, they close on exhalation and when protecting the larynx. Vibration of the cords creates sound. Change in the tension or thickness of the cords alters pitch. And take a breath. Uh, All right. This is a typical view of the larynx during intubation. Here you can see the curved epiglottis above, the bulges of the arytenoids below. The triangular gap between the vocal cords is called the glottis. Above and to the sides of the true vocal cords are the false vocal cords. Look how close the esophagus is to the larynx. Some landmarks may be partially hidden during a difficult intubation, so it's important to be able to recognize them even in partial view. 